Ambassador Ray, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very grateful to the IDSA for inviting me and especially to uh, Dr. Sumitri Patnaik who's been trying to get me here for 10 years, uh, finally worked. <coughs> Uh, the, my presentation is based on a large study which I've just completed with some colleagues for um, a think tank in Washington called USIP, United States International uh, United States Institute for Peace. Um, I, we all know that there are huge problems between India and Pakistan and I'm only going to talk about India and Pakistan, not South Asia. Uh, South Asia. And I think one of the problems in South Asia is India and Pakistan. If India and Pakistan don't work, South Asia doesn't work. There are problems of terrorism, there are problems of unresolved issues about Kashmir, there are problems about the water treaty, um, there's uh, numerous other problems. And for, for me, the biggest problem between India and Pakistan is that we don't pay, play cricket test matches. I think nothing could be worse. But anyway, I think other people think differently. We don't get visas. There's so many issues. And a lot of people would argue that um, unless the politics of India and Pakistan is fixed, trade won't increase. I don't agree with that. I think it's very important to fix all political issues, whatever they are, small, large, even cricket, visas, anything that you want. All that needs to be fixed and that's certainly going to help um, trade increase between India and Pakistan. But my presentation is going to be on complete something completely different. I'm going to make the argument that forget about politics. Just get the roads, uh, the roads, the wheels, and the carriages right, and trade will increase a great deal. And that doesn't need uh, either Prime Minister Modi or Nawaz Sharif or anybody else to think about these things. These are very simple, uncomplicated things. So I'm going to make the argument that perhaps the best way to enhance trade between India and Pakistan is to do it quietly through simpler, more doable measures, such as removing infrastructure and logistics related bottlenecks and we can leave politics to the politicians. I mean these are simple administrative and logistical measures which need to be taken. Um, I, because there's only about 15 minutes of time that I have, I'm not going to talk about the, the nature of trade with India and Pakistan and I think a lot of people have spoken about it. I think one of the surprising things is that the trade between India and Pakistan is about 2.3 billion dollars plus maybe 1.5 billion which is informal trade and there are lots of assessments which suggest that trade should be about 18 to 20 billion dollars between India and Pakistan. And the surprising thing is that even after the attacks of Mumbai, trade between India and Pakistan did not fall substantially. It fell for a few months, then it's gone up. So trade continues to grow between India and Pakistan. This is despite the fact that no Indian can come to Pakistan and no Pakistani can come to India. And it's, even if you're well connected with somebody at IDSA or anywhere else, you don't get visas. This is a serious problem, but trade still continues. I mean, it's one of those surprising things that despite so many uh, problems, constraints, trade has actually been growing every single year between India and Pakistan. So let me turn to what I think is sort of the, the infrastructural bottlenecks. And I think that's something that um, if we can work on that, that doesn't even require government to gov serious government to government contact. That just requires that the government in India tries to fix Atari, the government in Pakistan tries to improve Vaga, and you have substantial trade increasing. Uh, one cross-cutting thing, if you read any report in India-Pakistan trade, one of the cross-cutting themes are issues related to trade facilitation, non-tariff barriers, and other issues related to logistics, management, and transportation. All sectors, whether it's agriculture, whether it's automobiles, whether it's pharmaceuticals, whether it's chemicals, they have their own issues. But the main thing is about trade facilitation. There are three, largely three ways that formal trade takes place between India and Pakistan. Of course, there's informal trade, sometimes through Singapore, sometimes largely through Dubai, but I won't talk about that. It's through raid and r road and rail, Waga Atari, by sea, Mumbai, Karachi, and a little bit by air. About 65% of trade that takes place is by sea from Mumbai to Karachi. And imagine somebody in Haryana who has to go, has to send something to Mumbai, who has to send some, then it goes to Karachi and then all the way it goes to Rawalpindi. So it's, 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 it's a long way but it's, that's, that's what's been happening. Rail is about 5%, uh, rail is about 8% and road is about 23% of trade that takes place. 
before 1965, when India and Pakistan stopped trading, uh, most of the trade used to take place through ra uh, railways. Um, traders today, in both India and Pakistan, this is around Amritsar, Ludhiana, Atari, Vaga, and rest of Pakistan, uh, they find that road transport is the best means to transport goods, the cheapest, cheapest, the easiest to organize and to handle. They think the road is the best way to transport, especially given Punjab and Punjab and Haryana, Punjab trade that takes place. However, there, were, there are numerous minor and some significant issues which are a hindrance to increasing trade. As an important study examining the land routes has stated, if improvements in the land route between India and Pakistan can be addressed, can be can, can be improved, it will lower transaction costs, which can increase trade potential considerably. The land route is the most flexible and cost-effective way to trade between the two countries, and as many as about 80% of traders on both sides of the border, on Atari and on Vaga, say just improve the land routes and trade will increase. It's a simple thing. We talk, we're talking about old-fashioned connectivity, not digital, digital or any other form, just simple roads. So Pakistan allows, it's very interesting, Pakistan allows only 137 uh, items which can be imported from India by road. Only 137 items. And everything else has to be sent by trains or by, by railway or by ship. You know, only 137 items can be imported into Pakistan from India. Seems like that's very little, certainly very little, considering that uh, India trades perhaps a thousand uh, uh, items. But the interesting thing is that out of these 137 items, only five items are actually traded uh, via road. 80% of all trade that takes place along the road is a five of the 137 items. The 132 other items, whatever they are, they are not traded. And these are all related to issues related to carriage, storage, containers, and checks and, uh, checks and things like that. So the, the, the thing is that there are possibilities for increasing trade on the roads and on the railways across um, from Amritsar to Lahore, for example. But there are numerous logistical problems which affect trade from taking place. There are insurmountable logistical issues at the Vaga Atari border crossing. If any of you have ever crossed from Vaga and Atari across each other's countries, you'll see these uh, trucks which go three or four or five kilometers just waiting to pass. And it's simply just because there's some delay somewhere. I mean, it's it's a simple logistical problem. It's not a political problem. It's not an infrastructure. It's an infrastructure problem. It's not a digital problem. These are si simple things with more people manning the customs, more people manning the border. You can improve that. More trucks coming through, you can do quite a few things. If, if we could address these logistical issues, trade will increase a great deal. There are significant issues of severe congestion on the roads. I mean, if you try to drive from Lahore to Vaga and from uh, Atari to Amritsar, you can see the congestion on the road and a lot of trucks are just waiting to pass. There are lots of custom posts, there are lots of distance. There are, it's interesting that in 2012, a large facility, uh, both in Atari and Vaga was opened up. Within six months, it had reached capacity. And today we are talking about 2017, where there is far greater trade taking place. So the infrastructure that was built was built at a time when the protocols have, were, were very narrow. And now they've been widened. And now they are just not able to keep pace with the type of trade that's taking place, the amount of trade that's, trade that's taking place. Um, there are very few facilities for handling con containers, very few testing labs. They're not available at the border. There are other logistical uh, issues. Pakistani exports to India have argued repeatedly that there are extensive security checks on the goods that they are sending and there are consignments which cause delay and damage and these are disincentives to trade. I mean, this is not, again, as I said, this is not politics. This is just basic management. Um, Indian exporters have been asking Pakistan to lift restrictions on goods sent by ra road and to allow all items to be traded by the land route. But even at current limited levels, as I said, only five commodities from India constitute 80% of trade by road. The Vaga Tari border trade reaches breaking point repeatedly. I mean, if you go there and you see the customs uh, sort of uh, places uh, where, where goods are stored, they are in very, very poor, poor sense. Currently, there is no provision on the Indian side to incorporate the expansion of tradable goods. Whether this becomes a chicken and egg problem is something that requires further analysis. 
a reduction in congestion, better management, a single window for each for exports and imports at land customs, more warehouses and so forth would increase trade in the limited existing goods itself, whether new items are added on or not. The Indian demand for an expansion of the tradable goods by road to Pakistan will certainly increase exports to Pakistan, but it needs to take a number of prior steps from the Indian side first. The integrated check post, the ICP, at the border is unable to handle even existing trade volumes since the setup was initiated prior to the 2012 normalization of trade between India and Pakistan. Um, via, while Pakistan only allows the import of 137 commodities by road across the land border, there are, few there are few restrictions to send goods via rail across the same border. The limited trade which takes place via rail exemplifies the issues of poor management and poor logistics on both sides, India and Pakistan. If they just sort those issues out, it will help a great deal. Uh, with, there's a huge demand for rail carriages, but those carriages are not available. The railway line is three kilometers away from the integrated check post set up to facilitate trade. The allocations of wagons on the Indian side is done manually and is still not computerized. Temperature controlled and refrigeration wagons are not permitted. Goods requiring containerization are also not permitted and there is no provision for sending liquid or uncovered cargo. As Nisha Taneja at ICRIAR has and her colleagues have po pointed out, even though there are no restrictions on commodities that can be traded through the rail route, the restriction on the type of wagons permitted restricts the type of commodities that can be traded. Clearly, just as road transport facilitation, facilitation would require better management from the Pakistani side, issues related to railroads would be better addressed by the Indian side. I'll take five minutes and I'll finish. Long waiting periods are involved uh, in the return of carriages from Lahore. India has a very, what I would call a strange system of sending goods by, by, ra by rail. The goods are, pack, are put into the trains here and they go to Lahore and they have to wait till the, well, till more, till the goods are filled in from Lahore before these trains can come back. There is no uh, proper timetable for, for, train, for trains to move between, the, between both countries. There are few logistics, there is very little um, supervision about goods that are landing, that are, that are kept waiting there. There are no laboratories, testing facilities at Amritsar Railway Port, surprisingly. Uh, no facilities for mechanized loading and unloading of goods, no custodian of cargo at the railway station in Amritsar resulting in theft and loss and damage to goods. These are not political issues. These are simply somebody who can be based in Amritsar, Atari, Vaga, Lahore, who can just work these things out. Perhaps these are political issues in the, in the larger sense that, you know, if somebody took an interest and said, okay, let's try and improve the raid, the, the road and the rail network, that would help. But these are not the Kashmir and terrorism and water and you know other uh, issues which need to be resolved as well. So these are issues which can actually be addressed at the ground. Um, removing restrictions to transport protocols could lead to substantial gains from trade and addressing infrastructure constraints, particularly on the land routes and reforming protocols would benefit a great deal. Even if Pakistani studies have shown that existing custom infrastructure at the border is inadequate for handling trade between the two, even for the limited goods that are available. There are dissimilar custom procedures. On the Indian side, there are a host of agencies. There's the Border Security Force, Customs, Land Port Authority of India, Plant Quarantine Department, Bureau of Immigration, and Bureau of Indi Indian Standards. So it becomes very, it's, it's a very bureaucratic process. And if this was one made one window streamlined, you'd find that trade would just automatically increase without Mr. Modi having to visit Nawaz Sharif at his house or Nawaz Sharif having to come to Delhi. These things are simple on the ground issues which can be done. Uh, it has been pointed out by many traders and businessmen in Amritsar who I interviewed, who trade via road, rail, and sea, that many land border issues emerge as being specific to Pakistan. Their constraint is, their complaints are that, you know, the Atari Vaga border is specific to Pakistan and there are so many constraints there. There are security checks, there are multiple way, multiple uh, agencies looking at the goods that are coming in, the infrastructure is very poor and that's why trade between India and Pakistan suffers a great deal. So I'll end by saying that 
no it would be wonderful to resolve every single problem that exists between india and pakistan and there are a very large number of them uh, but these problems that i am talking about they don't require large scale political um, movements all they require is better bureaucra bureaucratic uh, and operational intervention at amritsar at lahore at atari and at wagha better road sense better management of goods better customs facilities better storage facilities and that's got nothing to do with politics so we can actually increase trade between india and pakistan by just focusing on one what one would call managerial logistical and trade facilitation issues thank you very much